hello students uh, this is a video on uh, a video in the series of videos that uh, we'll have regarding the previous year's question paper so without any delay let's get into the questions okay. um, so let me share my screen Yeah, so I think you can see my screen. And uh, yeah, so what you can see on the screen here are the, uh, is this question number one? It is uh, UPSC Anthro optional paper one uh 2021 2021 upsc uh, means that happened in 2022 feb january okay this is paper one and what we have here is question one question one so question one and five you must be knowing by now you must have seen the pattern of the question question number one and five are compulsory you have to attend out of total eight questions each question is of 50 marks eight questions each of 50 marks you have to attempt five five into 50 will be your 250 marks so you have to attempt five questions out of total eight questions that are given each question has many subsections so uh, now out of these five questions that you have to attend two are compulsory you have to attend question number one and question number five question number one and question number five are compulsory and then you have to attend three others attempt three others so this is a compulsory question in the compulsory question usually the questions usually there are five questions five sections a b c d e each a b c d e and each is of 10 marks each sub question is of 10 marks tens um to be written in 150 words 150 words 10 marks five subsections and compulsory so if there's any topic that you did not cover while covering the syllabus. And if that question comes here in this section one, uh, question one or question five, then uh, that's a loss of 10 marks, okay? So that's why it's always advisable to cover the entire syllabus. Do not leave a single phrase that is mentioned in the syllabus, okay? Uh, fine, so let's get into this. Um, first question, animism and deep ecology, 1A. Animism and deep ecology. So we all know how important ecology and environment is, you know, for UPSC. Uh, yeah, but this is not ecology. This is deep ecology. Okay, so you have to be careful. Now we'll come to animism, but before that, let me get into deep ecology. Okay. Uh, so what is ecology? Ecology, if you read ecology and environment books, you will see ecology is basically the realization that, you know, uh, there are uh, living ecosystems all around us. The study of ecosystems, basically ecology is the nothing but study of ecosystems. Study of ecosystems. And ecosystem is nothing but, you know, uh, interactional a network of interaction of living and non-living things in a given area in a given area it can be a small area like a small little pond or it can be a big area like the entire indian ocean where the living and the non-living things the living things like the fishes and the animals and humans and trees and plants and insects and algae and um, bacteria interact with the non-human uh, that is the air water oxygen nitrogen they interact with each other and you know they uh, live happily ever after so now you must be thinking that you know this is anthropology why are we dis discussing environment and ecology yes so we need to know what is ecology before we go into deep ecology in ecology 
we study the ecosystems we study the uh, ecosystem around us but why do we study it the basic idea before you know behind studying ecosystems is a selfish motive of our own our own selfish motive what is a selfish motive the motive is that you know we have to use the environment and ecology the resources sustainably we have to use them we have to use them we cannot stop using them you have to use them you know we depend on for food and everything on our ecology so we have to use them but use them sustainably why do we you know are we have suddenly you know i mean why why to use sustainably it is simply a selfish motive so using sustainably means that we use only to such an extent that our coming generations can also enjoy the resources so we use the resources but only to an extent that um, our coming generations later generations can also enjoy at least as much as we are enjoying if not more okay they should not find them themselves in a worse situation compared to what we have you know as the resources available around us so it's a selfish motive we want to conserve the ecosystem why because it's useful to us because it is important for our existence because it helps to meet our needs it gives us food shelter clothing everything you know e- economy and everything is you know uh, driven by ecology right so this is ecology when we want to conserve and we want, want to protect uh, environment because of because of the benefit it provides to us but when you go to deep ecology it's going deeper and becoming a more little you know it's 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 moving away from the selfish motive deep ecology simply means that you need to conserve the ecology around us you know we need to conserve the animals and plants and trees not for the reason that you know if we don't conserve we will lose out the resources no not like that we have to conserve not because they are beneficial to us but because they themselves have an individual you know presence like we have an individual personality the tree in my backyard you know the river flowing you know uh, there and the waterfall and the insects and the plants and the honey bee and the snail and the termite they all have their own individual existence like we have the right to exist and live they also have right to live and exist so the ecology the environment and the things around us you know the animals and the plants they need to be conserved not because of their usefulness but because they have their own intrinsic value because they have right to live like we have you know and uh, irrespective of whether they are useful or not so you know i would conserve a certain species of tree because it is useful for timber but i will not you know the other tree because it is not useful for timber the timber is bad its timber is not good quality so usko you know there is no need to protect that and need need to protect only the one that is useful this is very selfish ecology but in deep ecology you have to protect each and every species even if they are not useful in any way and at an extreme level deep ecology not only talks about conserving all the other species but it also says that if required to conserve other species in their pristine condition if required to conserve them in their pristine condition humans may have to re- reduce their population reduce human population so that non humans flourish non humans flourish these are the basic tenets of deep ecology okay now why this question in anthropology why this question in anthropology so if you have read about uh, unit 6 unit 6 of paper 1 which is basically about theory part there we have a gentleman called julian stewart although he belonged to the neo evolutionist school of thought neo evolutionism but he was more important more you know uh, you can say popular and his major contribution is uh, not in neo evolution but rather in something called cultural ecology 
okay so cultural ecology how cultures adapt to ecology how you know so we all find ourselves when we are born whether it's an animal or a human when we are born we find ourselves surrounded by our surroundings and all whatever culture we have whatever cultural artifacts we have whether it is tangible intangible things in our culture all the man made things that we have they are basically nothing but just a way that we have developed to adjust to our ecology culture is nothing but a, but a way of adjusting to our ecology you know so this is the concept cultural ecology is about adjusting to environment you know we have to adjust to the environment okay uh, and from so this is the starting in the 1950s and 60s julian stewart gave the concept of cultural ecology about culture being a way of adjusting to our ecology from there you know later we got the concept of sustainable development that is yes we should adapt and adjust to the uh, environment we should use our cultural tools to adapt and make our life life easy in the environment but it should not be to such an extent that we start destroying you know um ecology so that the later generation suffer and then we further move a level up then we reach deep ecology so basically cultural ecology evolved into the concept of sustainable development which is basically plain ecology and then that further goes ahead into the concept of deep ecology you know conserving even if it is useful or not useful so when talk so this is you know anthropology in anthropology if you just talk about the concepts it's like any general studies paper but if it's an optional paper you have to talk about scholars their books their works you know so you have to talk about julian stewart when talking about deep ecology that julian stewart's cultural ecology has evolved into deep ecology today okay this is one thing now what about animism animism uh, even the non anthropology students may have read it somewhere animism is nothing but assigning you know uh, life or you know you can say you know assigning value uh, you can say life type you know assigning life to uh, things that we find around us like you know the mountain you know we 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 see the mountain as a god and start worshiping we see the river as a goddess and start worshiping so you know uh, for those who have read about the rigvedic period in the rigvedic period lot of hymns are regarding the the rivers the five rivers you know um of aryavart the five rivers a lot of hymns are about the mountains a lot of hymns are, are about the soma plant the soma plant from where which uh, the soma drink was made so all these you know rigvedic hymns were praising you know some rivers you know uh, some animals some plant you know some natural feature so when we assign a uh, individual personality to a uh, living or a non living thing other than humans you know it is called animism in general parlance outside anthropology outside anthropology in general parlance this is animism so basically the rigvedic religion was animistic religion okay but animism in anthropology when it comes you have to go to this guy okay edward burnett tyler the first guy that you read in unit 6 that is the theory part the first guy you read about, about is tyler tyler was a classical evolutionist he has many contributions in fact he is called the father of cultural anthropology he is the guy who is responsible for starting anthropology as an individual subject earlier it was taught as a part of sociology you know so anthropology established as a separate subject in britain in the universities like oxford and cambridge it was because of this guy and some other guys around that time so tyler has many contributions uh, but the question is talking about animism so one of the contributions of tyler is evolution of religion he gave a concept of how religion originated and how it evolved so i will not go into too much detail because it's a 10 marker but the thing is that tyler said that religion began as animism next step was polytheism and finally 
the last stage is monotheism he says that when initially religion started you know people were worshiping souls why they were worshiping souls i'll tell you uh, in very short he says that the primitive man the hunting gathering primitive man you know thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago you know he was not a scientific guy so he did not know you know why dreams come or why someone dies and what is the difference between dying and sleeping you know so tyler says that the primitive man may have thought when he wakes up in the morning he thinks that uh, what was that maybe he was dreaming about something he was maybe he was he was running after some animal or some animal was chas- was chasing him in his dream but he wakes up and he sees are what happened just now i was chasing this animal i was on top of that mountain or i was having this delicious fruit on that tree but why have i suddenly come here inside this cave oh oh maybe when i was you know when i lay in the cave yesterday night something that looks like me came out of my body this something later became the concept of soul so this something came out of my body and it went out and did all those things that i was seeing when i was asleep so this is the how this is how early man may have interpreted his dream and he says that in the morning this my soul goes out it roams around everywhere and it comes back in the morning and i wake up if the soul does not come back then i don't wake up and i die so this early man's way of explaining dream and death this dream death experience this tyler calls the dream death experience this dream death experience made the early man think according to tyler okay according to tyler it is not proven it cannot be proven the theories this theory cannot be proven can never be proven so um, but this is the concept given by tyler he said that while thinking of dream and death early man thought that how powerful this soul is you know i am sleeping and it is reaching at those mountain tops and those trees and everywhere so quickly which i cannot do it is so fast suddenly it comes from there and wakes me up suddenly it goes and reaches so many so many places it is so powerful it is so powerful you know so it deserves respect and people started venerating and worshiping souls this worship of soul is called animism and it is the first stage of religion according to tyler but since soul was not just mine soul my soul his soul your soul their soul and people also assigned souls to non living things like rocks mountains trees plants you know because in the dream he also used to see the tree the animal the river so he says that in my dream my soul was there but the tree soul was also there the mountain soul was also there the animal soul was also there so there are so many souls and all are powerful so when people started worshiping so many souls it became polytheism and then finally man realized that all this is the creation of just one god and man went on with monotheism this is his theory so how to relate these two concepts the question talks about animism and deep ecology so both are in some way very similar animism is you know assigning individual personality to things around us and worshiping them as per tyler and deep ecology is again assigning individual personality to things around us and conserving them so this is animism and deep ecology you write the answer you give the name of two scholars you give the name of the theory given by julian stewart cultural ecology you give the name of the theory given by uh tyler which is this animism animism polytheism monotheism you know this evolution of religion 150 words aaram se ho jayega you know, one would easily you can do 150 words and good marks you can get okay fine but one thing when drawing these diagrams animism polytheism monotheism always draw like this monotheism on the top polytheism below that and animism below that so you show like this always always this evolutionary diagrams of something evolving are to be shown like this earliest stage at the bottom later stage at the top just like in geology we have the earliest layer at the bottom and then newest layer at the top okay, so this is how you have to show put it inside a box at the bottom right figure what the figure is about tyler's scheme of evolution of religion tyler's scheme of evolution of religion nicely you make it okay so that is question 1 a 
क्वेश्चन वन बी मैरिज रेगुलेशन एंड अलायंस थ्योरी ब्यूटिफुल क्वेश्चन ब्यूटिफुल क्वेश्चन इट इज नॉट सो यू नो इन दिस क्वेश्चन आई कैन सी दिस इज अ वेरी स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड क्वेश्चन स्ट्रेट फ्रॉम द सिलेबस विदाउट एनी मॉडिफिकेशन दिस इज अ वेरी स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड क्वेश्चन दिस इज अ लिटिल बिट स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड नॉट वेरी स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड but these two questions are very nice they are not straight forward little twisted questions nice questions so if you have knowledge you can write you cannot just mug up you cannot just you know take uh, the popular books written by um, uh, some you know people who have uh, become ias they have written written books very good books but the books you know are just you know solutions of previous years questions some people think that they will just read those two books of previous year's questions solution and they will clear anthropology with 300 plus marks that's not going to happen now those books are just to aid your preparation you can see from them how to write answer you can get some examples and case studies from them but though they are not your you know um, they are not sufficient you have to read the standard books also okay 1b 1b is about alliance theory and marriage regulations and alliance theory marriage regulations and alliance theory marriage regulations and alliance theory okay um okay marriage uh re regulations and alliance theory it's a beautiful question first of all you need to know alliance theory you need to know marriage regulations both are part of your syllabus alliance theory it is part of your uh, kinship and marriage i think it's part of kinship and marriage both you can say it is uh, part of kinship as well as marriage it's also part part of unit 6 uh, theories and the guy who, whose theory it is is levi strauss Levi Strauss, who belongs to which school? Structuralism. One of the most complicated theories. I have um, seen people say that just leave this part. No, छोड़ दो इसको. Don't study this. Don't put your head into this. This is very complicated, but it is not. It is very beautiful. It is very interesting. Also very funny. You will read and laugh about it. You know, it's a very funny. uh theory structuralism levi strauss do read it don't leave it so levi strauss structuralism that also contains alliance theory marriage chapter contains alliance theory kinship chapter contains alliance theory <coughs> excuse me and marriage regulations obviously it's from marriage chapter okay so this is what we have now okay just one thing i just uh, was able to recall you know we 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 should try to link you know um, different topics so here we linked you know two different theories uh, then um, you know you should try to link several parts of your syllabus sometimes they both must maybe from paper 1 sometimes one from paper 2 one from paper 1 so here you know in deep ecology we can you know and animism and deep ecology we can use paper 2 example also in paper 2 we have a topic called nature man spirit complex nature man spirit complex it's a beautiful example you know uh, that sums up both animism and deep ecology let me explain in little bit nature man spirit complex given by lp lp vidyarthi while studying the maler in today's jharkhand erstwhile bihar maler tribe also called mal pahadia he gave this theory lp vidyarthi nature man spirit so he found out you know that these people don't want to be displaced don't want to leave even if the government is offering them lucrative you uh, know price for their land and lucrative new rehabilitation for building a power project you know 
but they don't want to leave it at any cost so lp vidyarthi was sent by the then prime minister mr nehru to find out why so he found out that you know the man there the tribals you know they are living in a beautiful sync beautiful harmony with the nature and the spirit what is nature the nature is simply the jal jungle zameen you know the tribals are living there there are small little streams of water beautiful mountains little not mountains hills mountains are very high hills some hills green hills you know and uh, dense forests animals and all so that nature on one side and spirit spirit is basically you know they used to believe in the spirit of you know good spirits and bad spirits that were the gods you know that they used to please plus also the spirits of their own ancestors their own dead people you know they used to worship so someone is dead but his spirit lives in that tree someone is dead but her spirit lives in that stone someone's spirit lives in that little plant you know uh, little stone near that tree so you know different uh, spirits and nature the man is surrounded by spirits and nature from all the side and they all live in harmony and man cannot go out of there everything you know that they need in their life whether there is food whether their religion whether their economy everything is part of that man nature spirit complex and this beautifully sums up the question nature part is deep ecology you know because they are not the tribal stone conserve the nature just because it gives them fruit and uh, you know food they worship the trees and they worship the rivers and the mountains you know because their gods reside there so they worship it and that's why they conserve it not for their selfish needs so deep ecology and then spirit animism you know they are assigning spirits to different rocks and stones and hills and mountains so this is animism is there and deep ecology is both there and in between there is man the malari tribe so paper 2 concept one concept you know encompasses the entire question so paper 1 paper 2 can be linked you gave three scholars name three concepts 7.5 out of 10 at least seven okay marriage regulations and alliance theory marriage regulations alliance theory alliance theory is a very interesting you know uh, theory of levi strauss it's a 10 marker see these questions are 10 markers but i am discussing them in lot of detail because you never know next you know in the next year the same question may come as a 15 marker you know, or a 20 marker even so you should know the concept and you should know how to link concepts that will help you okay so that's why i am discussing in detail and not just treating it, it as a small 150 marker um now marriage regulation and alliance theory alliance theory levi strauss levi strauss in his uh, theory of structuralism he just talks about mental structures he brings down everything to mental structures according to him humans everywhere across the world have some basic structures inside their mind some basic structures and these structures always come in binary opposites so human brain has everywhere same kind of mental structures so universal mental structures in the brain and these structures come in binary opposites binary opposites like good bad good bad life death you me my yours black white okay culture nature so these are binary opposites everything human mind plans everything in binary opposites thinks everything in binary opposites that cloth is mine but that one is not mine this color is good but this one is not good like that okay this is his theory not mine okay so mental structures take everything as binary opposites this is the beginning of structuralism now while explaining structuralism he talked about lot of examples one examples was this that primitive man used to live in bands primitive man used to live in bands bands is a group of you know 40 50 hunter gatherers including their families and everyone and they keep on roaming around they do not settle at one place wherever they get food water they keep on roaming tonight they would stay in this cave next day they would stay you know in under this tree keep on roaming hunting and gathering so they are bands 
the earliest form of society okay so these bands they used to keep on roaming and sometimes bands may come face to face and they would compete for food you know so in the same area i am also hunting and that band is also hunting so this would lead to conflict but these people knew according to levi strauss these people knew that conflict is not good for their existence if they keep killing each other that's you know now no one will exist so that conflict had to be resolved what was the conflict here the conflict according to him is be is because of the mental structures the mental structure is thinking in binary opposites so us that is us versus them mine versus yours okay like this this is my not yours you know so let me hunt here so that is the you know that this is the conflict so but they realize that the conflict is not good it has to be solved so how do this how do how did they solve the conflict according to levi strauss they decided to share gifts give gifts to each other to solve the problem and what was the gift they gifted women so this is band a this is band b let me go to the next slide this is band a this is band b so they decided let's not fight i'm giving you a gift what is the gift a guy from your band can marry a you no know, woman from my band so this is a gift very happy band b is happy they reciprocate they reciprocate by giving their women to a in return so women are exchanged on both sides women are exchanged and get married to guy of the other band now here this is a very simplistic form there according to levi strauss there are two ways one is this kind of exchange which which, which he called as restricted exchange restricted exchange because it's happening only between a and b there is a c also there is a d and e also but only a and b aapas mein you know they have made an alliance a and b aapas mein you know women are being interchanged ex exchange so this is rest restricted exchange but levi strauss said that if this happens like this a gives to b a you know gives the women women to b but b doesn't give to a b's women go to c c's women go to d d's women go to e and maybe e's women will go to a so one who is giving one who is getting b is getting from a b is not giving to a this kind of an exchange he called as generalized exchange but for this question we don't need to go, to go this deep you know we just need to understand that he talked about exchange he talked about gift of women being exchanged okay and because of these two things happened one thing is the women we have to give women to b to keep peace to keep peace among ourselves we have to give women to b to form an alliance this is alliance theory that's why it's called alliance theory he said that to form alliance band a have to give women to b b have to give to a so if a have to give the women to b so the guys in band a cannot marry the girls in band a band a girls cannot be married inside that group they have to be married outside this gave birth to exogamy marrying women or marrying outside the group not inside your group we have caste Uh, we have uh, we have gotra exogamy in india you cannot marry inside your gotra you have to marry outside your gotra so this banned exog exogamy this give gave rise to exogamy which is one marriage regulation endogamy exogamy these are marriage regulations okay another thing is they have to be married outside they cannot be married inside they cannot be married to the band close members you know because these members of band a are the close relatives of the girls they are, they have close relatives in this band so they have to marry outside they cannot marry you know so what happened is once people started marrying their women out this became a rule that bahari shaadi karna hai they have to get married outside they cannot marry inside this also got converted into second marriage regulation called incest taboo incest taboo 
that marrying outside is the rule you cannot marry inside if you marry inside then the girl is being married to someone who is closely related to her by blood and this is incest we have to prevent incest so incest is a taboo the girls have to be married outside not inside the room so this marrying outside because of exchange give birth to exogamy marrying outside and incest taboo don't marry inside to close relatives so these are marriage regulations and these are coming from levi strauss's alliance theory so alliance theory marriage regulations isn't that the question marriage regulations and alliance theory okay so in this question you give levi strauss's name his theory's name called uh, structuralism you talk about his mental structures you call talk about the binary opposites us and them conflict with, between us and them resolved by the mediator which is the gift of women and this system once it kicked off it went on and on and on giving birth to things like exogamy marriage regulation incest taboo another marriage regulation so that will be all for today because since i am discussing in lot of detail the video length may go beyond the recording capacity so uh yeah so you know and also it will become boring if i uh, stretch the video so i will make make video in small chunks so that it, it is easily digestible okay uh small bites so that is it for today animism and deep ecology and marriage regulations and alliance theory i hope you understood the concepts at least at the superficial level something about it now if you read in the book if you google about it if you see youtube you will understand the concept better okay so hope this helps thank you guys good night